Hi everyone and welcome back to the Demystifying Research YouTube channel. Today we'll be exploring a novel topic of research called macrophage myofibroblast transition or MMT for short. The research and inspiration for this video came from the recently published review paper in the Wound Repair and Regeneration Journal written by our expert collaborators Megan Virhu and Dr. Edmar Ayu who are both friends of the Demystifying Research channel. Here's a QR code to the paper if you're interested in reading it after this video. Now, before we get into our topic, let's go over what will be discussed. We'll go into depth and expand on what MMT is and why it's important. But first, we'll define some terminology that is essential for understanding. We will then explain a schematic diagram from the paper that summarizes MMT very well. Then we will highlight some evidence of MMT and kidney disease. And lastly, we will discuss a couple of limitations to the paper. So before we explain MMT's role in disease and wound healing, we will first work our way back to the myofibroblast. The myofibroblast is a specialized cell type in our body that is essential for healing wounds. They are typically present after some physical injury, such as a burn on the skin or tissue damage, as they help participate in tissue remodeling. The MMT theory suggests that under specific conditions, some myofibroblasts may be derived from monocytes. Monocytes, with mono referring to one nucleus and site referring to cell, are a type of white blood cell that help to find and destroy germs such as viruses and bacteria. These monocytes can be differentiated into macrophages, with macro referring to large and phage referring to eater, which typically occurs when monocytes enter a tissue in our body. From there, this is where the macrophages can be further specialized into myofibroblasts, and this is what the macrophage myofibroblast transition theory proposes. The myofibroblasts play an important role in wound healing and scar formation. This typically happens after an injury occurs, and the creation of a scar is critical for the closure of a wound. However, there must be a fine balance of myofibroblasts kept, even when in the process of healing a wound, because too many myofibroblasts or their dysregulated behavior can result in excessive scar formation. In the case where there is too much scarring, an unwanted condition called fibrosis may occur. Now this is the, where the theory of MMT comes in. As the macrophage myofibroblast transition is believed to play a role in fibrosis. This term, MMT, is essentially just describing the mechanism through which the monocytes and macrophages transform into myofibroblasts and contribute to fibrosis. Fibrosis is the formation of internal scar tissue, and as we touched on before, the progression of fibrosis can lead to organ malfunction and in some cases, even death. Figure 5 from the research paper summarizes MMT. As you can see, we have monocytes, which develop in our bone marrow, leave the bone marrow, and enter the blood circulation. From here, these monocytes will extravasate, which basically just means flow out from the circulation or vessel, and enter various bodily tissues of many different organs. At this point, the monocytes can now be considered macrophages, and it is these macrophages that can undergo the macrophage myofibroblast transition to become myofibroblasts. Once these macrophages have differentiated into myofibroblasts, they may contribute to tissue scarring and fibrosis. There are a number of studies that seem to support MMT and kidney disease. For your knowledge, a common cause of end-stage kidney disease is fibrosis. Kidney fibrosis is characterized by a significant accumulation of myofibroblasts inside the kidney. The excess amount of scar tissue that the myofibroblasts create leads to a deteriorated structure of the kidney, as well as increasing stiffness, interrupting blood flow, and decreasing nephron function, which are essential structures in the kidney. Now onto the evidence found in various species of MMT and kidney disease. So to begin, MMT cells co-express markers of both macrophages as well as myofibroblasts. The markers for macrophages are CD68 and F480, and the marker for myofibroblasts is alpha-SMA. So in humans with a type of kidney disease that involved fibrosis, it was found that the number of MMT cells were largely elevated. Over 60% of myofibroblasts, or cells with the alpha SMA marker, were once macrophages with the CD68 marker. The quantity of these cells undergoing MMT was correlated with the severity of fibrosis or scar tissue formation, as well as kidney function. In mice, Studies induced kidney fibrosis and found the expression of F480, which is a marker of macrophages, as well as the expression of alpha-SMA, which indicates the presence of myofibroblasts. This suggests MMT is also present in mice with induced kidney fibrosis. 
In rats with induced diabetic kidney disease, evidence of cells undergoing MMT were also found as cells were expressing both CD68 and alpha SMA markers. This indicates that cells expressing characteristics of both macrophages and myofibroblasts were present in rats with diabetic kidney disease. Although there is an increasing amount of evidence for MMT across species, the literature supporting this theory still has some limitations. We will highlight two of them. The first limitation is that circulating cells are not the only contributors to the development of fibrosis. The microenvironment may also play a key role in causing those cells to undergo MMT, and there is likely a complex interplay between circulating cells and the microenvironment in the tissue. Further studies are required to investigate the microenvironment in the development of fibrosis. The second limitation is that although this review was able to show that there is adequate data for characterizing the myofibroblasts that result from MMT, there is still limited evidence for the functionality of myofibroblasts themselves. A distinguishing feature of myofibroblasts is their ability to contract, but this has not yet been directly found in the studies presented within the paper. So more investigation of functional properties of myofibroblasts that result from MMT is required. That brings us to the end of our video. We hope you learned a bit more about the roles of macrophages, myofibroblasts, and the macrophage-myofibroblast transition in both wound healing and diseases involving fibrosis. Thanks for watching.